In this video, we're going to be continuing our treatment of the multiprocessing module in Python. Specifically, we're going to be taking a look at how to make use of the Q class. And the Q class is going to allow us to instantiate a Q data structure from the multiprocessing module and allow us to share that data structure among various processes. So we can put things into this Q and also take things out of the Q and the way in which we put things into the Q will be done over different processes. So there might be something accessing the same resource, namely the Q, among the different processes that we will actually instantiate. So let's go ahead and just write up a simple uh, two functions. What we're going to do is we're going to create a function called square and a function called cube. Both of these are going to take lists of numbers. We're going to take the respective square and cube of each of the numbers in that list and then we're going to place each of those numbers into a shared queue between those two things that we'll be treating as two separate processes. So let's just go ahead and start to code that up and I think it'll become a little bit more concrete if that was all kind of vague. So let's start off by, uh, from multiprocessing, we'll import two things. Actually, let's start off by importing two things. So we'll import process so we can actually create a process for both the square and cube function. And then we're also going to import queue. And this is going to be the data structure that's going to allow us to simultaneously access this particular resource, which we'll instantiate in the main part of the program. So let's go ahead and just create the main part of the program for now. So we'll say if underscore name is equal equal to double underscore main, and in here, what we're going to do is we're going to instantiate a Q object. So we'll say Q is equal to uppercase Q. And what we're doing is we're creating an object of this Q class that we're creating from multiprocessing. And before I do that, I'm going to also just create a numbers list. And we're going to pass this numbers list to each of the two functions, the square and the cube functions that we'll eventually create in this video. So I'll say numbers is equal to, let's just say range of five. So it's just going to be a list of numbers from zero to four. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create two processes. And before we create those processes, let's just go ahead and create the functions to which those processes will correspond. So we'll create one function, which is called square. And this is going to take a list of numbers. And it's also going to take the Q, which will be adding the result of each of the computations in this function. So inside of this function, what we're going to do is we're going to loop through the list of numbers that were given. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say q.put. So put is a method that every q in multiprocessing has associated with it, which allows us to place the contents of whatever we have in the parentheses of this function into the queue that we're sharing among processes. So in this case, the value that I want to put in this queue is just the square, so that it's just i times i. So we'll do a very similar type of function for the cube function as well. So let me just replace this with, instead of square, let's call that cube. It'll take numbers and Q. And then instead of putting I times I, we'll just add an extra times I in there to make it a cube. So now we have our two functions. And what we're going to do inside of the main is we're going to create processes for each of those functions. So let's go ahead and create one thing which we'll call square process. And this will be a process for the square function. So we'll create an object of the process class. And what we'll do is we'll give it the target of the square function that we created above. And then for the arguments, that's going to be given as this tuple, which in this case is just going to be numbers, the numbers list that we created above, and then also the Q object that we also created above. I'm going to copy this and then do the same thing for the cube as well. So we'll have a separate process for the cube, changing the target as well here. So now we have both a process for the square and cube. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start each of those processes up. So I'll say square process dot start, and then I'll do the same thing for the queue process as well. So queue process dot start there. And then before we go on to the next part of the program, let's just join them to make sure that everything has been completed before we go on to whatever we show after this. So let's say square underscore process uh, dot join, and we'll do the same thing for the cube as well. And then what we're going to do after we've uh, joined the processes that we've created and instantiated here, we're going to access the queue and we're going to look at the contents of the queue. What we should see is that since we're ranging over five, we're passing this numbers list to both of the functions square and cube, 
we're going through each of the range of numbers and then we're putting in the square of each of the numbers in that list. And what should be happening is the queue should be putting the results in the same queue. So we're accessing that shared resource among two different processes that were instantiated. So let's just go ahead and make sure that, that is the case. So what we're going to do after we join is we're going to loop through the elements in the queue and then just keep printing them out until the queue is empty. So we're gonna say while queue dot empty or while not empty so while it's not empty keep going and keep printing the contents out so inside of the while loop we'll just say print queue and there's another method for every queue object in the multiprocessing module which is the dot get method and that will just get the the thing that is at the front of the queue and that will just put that out and then we'll return that object and then we'll just keep doing that in that way until the queue is eventually empty so let's just go ahead and write this content here. So we'll say write, and then we'll clear the terminal to make sure that the output is clean. And then we'll just go ahead and run the function. So we'll say Python process communication, and we'll notice that each of the elements, let me go back here, each of the elements that are printed out are, in this case, the elements of the square uh, in some order that doesn't necessarily have to be in the order in which the uh, processes are listed in the main function, but the contents of the queue contain the elements of the square and elements of the cube for each of the numbers 0 through 4 for each of the respective processes that were instantiated. So again, the order in which those processes, the order in which the results are written to the queue is not necessarily sequential, but the contents of the queue, since both of these processes happen to be sharing that same resource, are writing their results to that queue, and then we're just going through, looping through the queue contents until it's empty, and then printing those results out as we go. So that's all I really wanted to cover in this video. If you have any questions or comments, don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below. The code, as always, will be available on my GitHub, and I'll leave a link to that in the description. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.